All right, let's uh, get now to your first real creative kind of bit of work, and that's going to be the creation of your header image for your website. Now, you're going to end up probably creating a few of these, and it will, like the rest of your portfolio, evolve over time. Uh, but to get things started and to get your grade for your midterm, this is uh, the process you're going to go through. So your header image is this image here. Now, some of you have chosen different themes, and that's totally fine. The steps are going to be the same. Maybe some of these sizes are going to be different, uh, but the steps are the same about how I'm going to edit this to look good. First, let's talk about exactly what a header image is. If we go over to my actual portfolio, the one that is still a work in progress, but it's getting closer, I've created this header image here. Um, now, that's a photograph of myself looking out over Würzburg, Germany. I've done some blue kind of texturing, coloring to it. I've done some swirl um, patterns inside of it, and then added some really nice text, and it says professional portfolio there. So that's what we'd be talking about when we talk about a header image. You guys are used to these, um, very used to these, because when you go to YouTube, they have what's called their channel art, right? Well, channel art's nothing more than a header image. Facebook has their little Facebook banner is what they call it. Uh, it all is basically the same. You can do a pretty good search online for, um, header images here and you'll be able to see them. I thought I had done that. Um, but you know, if you're lacking inspiration on what exactly to put in here, uh, you can put, you can do a, a Google search and kind of see what other people put. And it's going to be kind of personal. Those of you that are into graphic design, yours might be more graphic designy, some kind of clip art, almost infographic look. Those of you that are photographers, it might be more like that. Those of you that are more into the editing side, they might be a, an edited photograph similar to how mine was. So it's very personal what you put in here, but it's, it's, it's your opportunity to kind of give that visual image to your viewer about kind of your styles, I guess is what it is. All right, so enough about what it is. Let's talk about how we're going to make it. The One of the critical things, uh, and this has been true throughout all of our time in RTV, is where is this going and what is it for? Right, we had to know to design graphics the right size for the new show and those uh, kind of things and design how big does the GIF need to be so it downloads fast and all of that. And that's the same here is we want to have an image that actually fits in here. I could just pop any photograph I have in there, but it may not fit and it certainly may not fit when we start talking about cell phones and stuff. So the first thing we need to determine is the actual size of this area. To do that, follow these steps. You're going to hover over the image and you'll get this edit image option. And it will bring up the image editor. Now Weebly's got a really nice feature here. We can actually add a photograph in and start doing all kinds of adjustments to it. We're getting good at Photoshop, so we're gonna to wanna to just design this whole thing in Photoshop ourselves because it has much more options and many more fonts to choose from. That being said, we still don't see what size this is and we won't until we click on this button here, which is the crop button. So clicking crop and clicking on our image, if it goes, you'll suddenly see a little number there, or two numbers, showing up on the inside. This particular on mine, it's 880 by 322. Yours, if you chose a different theme, you might have an entirely different sized header image. So don't necessarily pay attention to the numbers, just pay attention to the fact that there are numbers. So 880 by 322 is the size that I'm dealing with. That seems like an awfully odd number, but it's actually measured in pixels, the number of dots along my screen. So 880 by 322 is a number that I might want to write down on a sticky note or just kind of mentally lock up, because our next step is, we're going to close that out, is to take ourselves over to Photoshop. We're going to do a File, New Document, or you can do Command N. And under our new document, and mine again looks a little bit different, but find the area where it says width and height. And for mine, it was 880 by, I of course forgot already because I talked too much, uh, 880 by 322. 880 wide, 322 tall. The resolution, you can leave at 72 because that's the standard resolution for television screens and computer monitors and all of that stuff. So we'll leave that. And the color mode is RGB because, again, that's the standard mode. Don't worry about background contents. Well, I would say leave background contents as white. Okay. When I say OK, I will get a new untitled document that is the exact same size as this website 
header. So when I upload this image that I'm gonna create in Photoshop, it'll upload exactly to that size and it'll fit and it'll look just like it is when I designed it. If you design this on something else, you're gonna be sorely disappointed, just like some of you were with your graphics on the, on the new show. If you didn't design them in the right size in the first place, they didn't show up right when they went to the new. So that being said, from here, this is basically becomes a typography, photo editing, uh, kind of a game. Um, just to do a simple one, I'm just going to choose mine as a chalk. I'll do a search for chalkboard texture, and I might, uh, come on, baby. my internet's slow at my house, which is where I'm recording these. Sure, I like that one. I'll take that image, drag it into Photoshop. I'm going to do Command A to select all of it, copy it, put it into Photoshop here. And I'll size it up, and then I'll do some quote about education, because this is my teacher's thing. Uh, it's a really small font. We'll make it much bigger. And I'm not going to do a good job here. You're going to spend a lot more time on this than I'm going to here. Uh, I would guess you're going to spend a good half day or so. And again, you're not trying to make this perfect yet. This is the start of your portfolio. Um, you know, over your time in art, you a lot more. So this is going to be an awesome quote about how great teachers are. Let me shrink that down. Not that far. Awesome quote about how great teachers are. Come on. Okay, and I'll, I'll just kind of mess with that a little bit. You can use a quote. You can just use an image. Uh, or you can use a little bit of text and images. However, you might want to get rid of that circle driving me nuts. Um, awesome quote about how great teachers are. And the last step for this is to go ahead and save this. But we want to save it in a, in a kind of unique way. And don't be surprised, you're going to maybe make a few different headers here. Um, I'm going to save it first off. And I like to have a folder on my computer, which you can see here on this portfolio creation folder I have a folder called or I'll create a folder called um, portfolio assets and asset assets is a term that is just all the things that I might want to go into my portfolio so I might put another folder in here of all the pictures I want or of all the graphics and this is happens to be a header one and I want to save that with, well, I can't remember the size again. I want to add the size of this image to this header. Because if later I decide to change my theme, I want to know what size it was. So header one is 880 by 322. As always, I'm going to put my initials on it and I'll save that. That is a Photoshop file. And if I look at that Photoshop file, you can see that it is three megabytes, which is a relatively large file there. So I'm gonna save that again so it uploads faster. And I encourage you to do the same, though you can upload the Photoshop file. I'm gonna save it again, Command Shift S. And this time I'm gonna save it under format down here. Under format, I'm gonna change it to PNG. And it will keep the same name. It'll just have a PNG ending. And if I go back to Finder, you'll see, going back to the folder, that that PNG asset is 262 kilobytes, which is much smaller than megabytes. So that'll work better. All right, final step, back to Weebly here. I'm gonna go back to my header, click edit image, and I will, oh, I'm sorry, not edit image. I will choose this little drop down menu and also upload image. Next, I can upload my own image, browse for my image, which if it's in my portfolio assets folder, again, I'm staying nice and organized so I can find stuff quickly. There's my 880 by 322, my PNG. And when I open that up, it loads relatively quickly. And bingo, bingo, 
if all goes well, it's going to ask me how I, if I might want to edit it. And I can even come in and add some of these filters here. Actually, that one's kind of cool. Uh, so even on my own one that I made, I can use Weebly's little thing. And uh, the, it's going to ask me if I want to save it to all pages or this page or selected pages. I'm going to go ahead and save it to all pages here. And it should then show up, fit perfectly, and I've created my own little custom um, header there. Yours might be an image, uh, something a little more generic like this portfolio. It may be a quote, it may be whatever you want, but you have to design something that fits perfectly beautifully in your window there. And we'll talk more at the end about how to customize those for each and every single page.